Microsoft released the SharePoint Framework version 1.18 on September 12th, 2023. And this release features one big change among a bunch of other updates such as core dependency upgrades. Now the majority of this release is centered around adaptive card extensions, also known as ACES. Now unlike earlier releases where I found lots of undocumented thing, the official release notes, they're mostly complete, but just like prior releases, I did find a few additional nuggets in my research picking this release apart. Now this video is going to cover everything that you need to know about the SharePoint Framework version 1.18 release. I'm gonna reference a lot of links to a lot of additional documentation, all those links will be included in the article that's associated with this video, and they'll be included in the description as well below this video. You'll find all those links in the description. Now, this release can be grouped in a couple different categories. The first is going to a pair of fixes or in a pair of deprecations. The next is an update to some core dependencies for SharePoint Framework projects, including two big changes. And then updates to ACES, such as replacing all the project templates with new templates. We'll get to that towards the end. So... Let's get started. Let's start with some bug fixes. Now, firstly, about the SharePoint framework and Microsoft Teams solutions, Microsoft replaced the icon that we get in a default SharePoint framework project. And that's gonna be used typically as the icon for a, the uh, app in a Microsoft Teams uh, based project. So when you deploy your SharePoint framework project to uh, as a Teams app to Microsoft Teams, the previous icon that we had didn't meet the design uh, requirements or guidelines for Teams apps. So to meet these requirements, what Microsoft did is they had to update the icon to remove a solid border around the icon. Instead, they replaced it with a transparent outline. Now, there are two deprecations related to ACES that we need to cover here. Now, I'm going to talk about both of these a lot more uh, later in the video. I can't do too much with them right now. I do want to mention them, but they're going to come to the big news that we're going to talk about a little bit later. The first thing that's been deprecated is the class base adaptive card view. That's used as the base class for quick views. It's been replaced by a new class called the base adaptive card quick view class. The other thing that was deprecated is the template method on the base template card view class. That and all of its descendants have been deprecated. And we were able to use that by overriding the um, cards that were going to be used, but we, Microsoft doesn't want us doing that anymore. Now, the next set of updates, they're all around dependencies. Now, probably the biggest one that we want to talk about first is that all SharePoint Framework projects uh, that are version 1.18 or higher, they now support Node.js version 18. Previously, only Node.js version 16 was supported, and it still is, but it's only supported for SharePoint Framework projects officially. Why? Well, Node 16 released end of life on September 11th of 2023. Wonder why the SharePoint Framework 1.18 came out on September the 12th, one day later? Maybe that's why. Now, the version of TypeScript that's used to transpile our SharePoint framework projects, that was also updated from version 4.5 to version 4.7 in this release. You don't have to do anything that's already done for you in every new project. Another very minor update that won't likely have any impact on any of us is that Webpack was updated to a new version. It went from 4.44.2 to 4.47.0. Again, that's included as part of the project dependency, so nothing for you to do. Now, unlike some of these other dependencies, this next one is a big update. What we Microsoft did is they updated the version of Fluent UI React from version 7 to version 8 in this SharePoint framework release, specifically Fluent UI React 8.106.4. Now, if you use Fluent UI React in your SharePoint framework projects and you want to migrate to use Fluent UI React in those projects, the new version of it, version 8, where you upgrade those projects, you may run into a couple of little issues because it's a major release. Well, the Full UI React team has tried to help you with this and they've provided a migration guide to go from version seven to version eight. I'll include a, note, a link to that in the notes below this video. Now the SharePoint Framework API has an internal reference to the Microsoft Teams JavaScript SDK that is already initialized for developers to use in SharePoint Framework projects. Now in this release, Microsoft updated the Teams JavaScript SDK to version 2.12.0. That version of the Teams JavaScript SDK is relatively new or recent. It was released in June of 2023. The upgrades, this upgrades the JavaScript SDK in SharePoint Framework projects that we had in 1.17 from 2.9.1 up to the 2.12. Now the most current version of the Teams JavaScript SDK is 2.15. Now, I bring this up for a reason, as I've heard from a few developers about some interesting issues that they're running into with the Teams JavaScript SDK 
and the new Teams desktop app for Windows and Mac OS. The Teams JavaScript SDK group has released a few new versions from what we are going to find in the SharePoint Framework SDK that includes a few new capabilities. And I noticed in the, some of the commits and those updates, it also addresses some issues around the new Teams desktop clients that the JavaScript SDK is going to take into account. So for example, the Teams JavaScript SDK 2.13 adds a new marketplace capability to help, with the, help developers with the checkout flow for apps that are deployed to AppSource. And they also added a live share capability to help build real-time collaborative apps um, as well using the live share SDK. Also, the 2.15 release, the most recent one as of this recording, that adds a clipboard capability allowing access to the system clipboard as well as support for Mac OS. Now, unfortunately, this is one of the downsides of the SharePoint framework team, including a copy of the team's JavaScript SDK, because we're not going to always have the latest and greatest stuff if we're dependent on a new SharePoint framework release to utilize the latest uh, team's features in, the, in their JavaScript SDK. We're always going to be dependent on the SharePoint team uh, at updating it for us. Okay, that wraps up a look at all the changes to the dependencies in this SharePoint framework release. So now let's look at a few updates that Microsoft added to the SharePoint framework 1.18 release. As I said earlier, this, this is an, a primarily an update centered around adaptive card extensions or ACEs. This release of the SharePoint framework version 1.18 includes a bunch of improvements to ACEs that I want to cover before we get to one really big change that they made. Now the first update, pretty small, is the addition of a host context property to the ACES context object that developers can use to determine the current theme uh, if we're in the mobile um, client, uh, specifically the Viva Connections mobile client. This can return one of the three different values, either light, dark, or undefined. This SharePoint framework release includes a change to adopt the universal action model that was been, that's been adapted by adaptive cards. Now, as adaptive cards grew in popularity, different hosts started supporting different action models, and this led to fragmentation. So to solve this problem, the Microsoft Teams group, the Outlook group, and the Adaptive Cards group, they all worked together in creating a new universal action model. And this is compatible across all three of these different hosts. This effort led to a couple of different things that resulted in the generalization of bots in the bot framework as the way to uh, implement adaptive card based scenarios. And this includes both for Microsoft Teams, bots, and Outlook actionable messages. Part of this also gave us the action.execute as a replacement for the action.submit that was used by bots. And it also gave us as it acts as a replacement for the action.http, which is used by actionable messages. Now, in addition to those things, some popular features that were only supported by actionable messages were made available now to bots. And this new universal action model is going to give us the ability for adaptive cards to be refreshed at the time that uh, it's being displayed and the ability for the action.execute action to return an updated card to be immediately displayed uh, in the client. Now developers can also now use an, a text input component in a body or a footer of an adaptive card extension. And this can be used to collect some information from your users. And in addition to that, we also have support for an on change event that the text input box uh, on the text input box so that we can react to when the text changes uh, as well. But that's not all. In addition, it's also going to work for a search box. We're going to talk more about that search box in just a minute. Now for the big news. The rest of the news in this release is all related to a very significant update in how we build ACEs. Now, kind of unfortunately, kind of not. This is likely going to lead to most of us wanting to rebuild our existing adaptive card extensions, although it's not required as everything is backwards compatible and your existing cards will continue to work. In the SharePoint Framework 1.18 release, Microsoft is replacing the project templates that we've been using to create new ACEs. So let's take a look back. Previously, we had three options for creating adaptive cards. We could choose the basic card or the image card and then we also had another option for the primary text card as well. And these are now referred to as template-based approaches to ACEs. Each project template would create a different type of a card. 
Well, in this release of the SharePoint framework, Microsoft is retiring all three of those templates and removing them from the generator. And it's replacing them with two new templates, generic card and search card. Now these new options, these are a more granular uh, component-based way of uh, uh, creating ACEs that result in a lot more flexibility in how we can design and implement our ACEs. Now these flexible views are based on an allowed set of variations using the generic card template. You can learn more about the different combinations uh, from the docs. I'll include a link to a big table that Microsoft has that explains uh, all the different variations. It's on the card design page in the design guidelines section of Viva Connections uh, docs. Again, it'll be a link in the, in the notes below. Now, a new generic card template has full support for everything that we used to be able to do with one of those three original templates. But unlike those old templates, the new template and classes give us a lot more control over our ACE designs because we can control things such as the card bar. This is where the ACE's icon and name usually goes. We can control the header. That's where the heading or the primary text that we use in the original template that's right below the card bar. We can control the body. That's where we previously added the description of the card. Uh, we have the image, which is how we implemented that original image card template. And then we also have the footer. And this is where the action commands uh, like buttons uh, would normally go as well. Now these options are provided through the generic card template. These allow us to implement four different types of card layouts with, a very, with one single template. Whereas before, as I said, we had to pick from one of those three templates to choose one of the different card layout options. Now we have one template that we can use for all of these different options. Uh, the first one is one with just a heading. Then we can have a heading and an image. We can have a heading and a description. And finally, we can have a heading and a text box. While Microsoft removed the old templates, existing projects, as I said, they're still all supported and they will continue to work as is. No change is required. In fact, the uh, three of the original card types can be implemented using the generic card template. And if you want to do the migration, Microsoft has even made this easier for us. Um, and they've created a migration guide, which is very basic, but it kind of walks you through um, how to upgrade those cards. To simplify this process of the migration, what Microsoft did is they added three helper functions, one for each one of those old templates that you can import into your project and you can use that to map the old API to the new classes. Uh, you can take an ACE that was originally implemented using the basic card template, such as one that you see here, and I could implement the exact same thing as you see from this other code, um, and by doing that using the, uh, by implementing that utility function, the base card view uh, function. And that's gonna map things like the primary text to the card's header, the title to the card's command bar, and the button to the card's footer uh, section. If you want to see how to migrate some additional cards, let me know. Drop a comment below, and I'm going to create some videos uh, migrating some of mine and show you some examples. Now, one thing I want you to keep in mind here is that you don't have to upgrade all of your existing ACEs to use the new templates, but you might want to uh, add it to your listing uh, of things that you want to consider doing in the future. And the reason why I say that is because I would expect that new features and capabilities that Microsoft adds to these ACEs and ACE projects they're only going to be in the in the new API and supported in the new project types and APIs. So you probably want to get on the new stuff first, but the conversion that you have to make is really not that big of a deal. I don't think it is at least. Uh, so it might be something you just wait until the next time you do an update to your project. There's also a new ACE search card template as part of this update. And this new card type is going to contain any input control uh, like the ones I, I talked about previously uh, in this video. Now, one thing I want to warn you about is that you might want to use this sparingly for now, because as this new text input component and the associated on change event, they're not fully supported in all the experiences just yet. At the release uh, time of SPFX 1.18 and the release of this video, they're only supported in the Microsoft Teams bra uh, browser or web client and the desktop clients. They're not supported in the Viva Connections mobile clients just yet. Now, Microsoft says they will be supported in the Viva Connections mobile clients, but all they've said is it's going to be enabled later. They didn't say when that later is or give us any kind of hints. All right, that's a wrap on the latest release of the SharePoint framework, version 1.18. What did you think about this release? Do you like these ACE uh, improvements that Microsoft added to this? So far, I haven't really seen any issues around like reported uh, from the SharePoint framework version 1.18 release, but 
history has shown us that there's almost always a regression uh, with one of these minor releases uh, that Microsoft releases. So my advice is to hold off on upgrading your projects or using 1.18 for about three weeks after the release. Um, that would mean that you wouldn't start using this until about early October. Uh, and the reason I say that is you probably want to wait to see if there's a patch update. The last few releases of the SharePoint framework have followed the new minor releases with at least one patch release on an average of about three weeks following the initial release uh, of the SharePoint framework. So again, what do you think? Leave a comment below the video and let me know what you think, or if you've got any questions um, about this release or any ideas for future videos, I'd love to hear them. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next time.